My name is Ben. I'm going to talk to you about uh, web comics. So, you know, this might be old hat for some of you because you know you're all nerds and you like the web comics. But uh, I assume that there's like maybe two, three people out there who have never heard of such a thing before. And so, for you, I give this presentation. So the question is, why should you want to read web comics? Um, it's because print comics, they're not funny anymore. They haven't been funny for a long time. The problem is that they have to go after an audience that is very, very broad. And so they miss the ability to do anything good, really. Uh, web comics can go after very specific target audiences. For instance, VG Cats, which is a gaming comic. If you're a gamer, their jokes are your jokes. These are things that you've done before, uh, uh, things that you've seen. The problem is, of course, if you're not a gamer, you're not going to get it. VG Cats isn't going to be funny. Uh, a little bit more mainstream, still gaming comic, is Penny Arcade. Uh, the thing about Penny Arcade, though, is that it is a geek comic. The authors are geeks, and that's what they love, that's what they're passionate about, so that's what they write about. So, um, the, the focus subject matter issue is really one of the great things, uh, and it, wow, I, yeah, I don't know, something, something, something. It's great. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So. Reset. Another cool thing is that you can say fuck. You can. It happens all the time. Uh, nearly every webcomic that I read would be completely unprintable in uh, an American daily newspaper. Um, you know, sex, drugs, violence, uh, kids being taken to hookers for their condom merit badge. All this kind of stuff. <laughs> this kind of stuff is totally fair game on the web. Um, now, of course, this is not necessarily something that is specific to, to web comics. Red Meat has been around, uh, started as a print comic five years before the web even existed, and the author insists to this day, even though most of his readers read it on the web, that he is not a web comic. In fact, there's a huge rant on his website about that very topic right now. So, another thing that you can't really do in a newspaper, well, you can to a certain extent, but you can get some really super great art in a webcomic, and uh, that's one of the things that I like a lot, uh, is just looking at the stuff that they, you know, that they can put out there. Um, there's a guy, uh, his name is Kazu Kibuishi. This is his comic strip, Copper. Um, I don't even know what to say, it's beautiful. It, uh, when I was looking for uh, Copper strips to show, um, I actually kind of teared up a little bit because it's so pretty, and I, yeah, whatever, I don't know. Laugh if you want, it's fine. Um, Scott McCloud, who is a, uh, yeah, he's that guy. A very well-known comics writer, uh, author, writer about comics, uh, has a quote. He says that uh, Kibuishi's art is so pretty that it makes his hands hurt to look at it. And uh, I'm not an artist, but I can identify with that. So... Another aspect of the art is that you get to watch the progression over time. So this is Goats. Goats has been around now uh, since 97, so 12 years. This first strip up here, or the first panel up there, is from the first week of the strip. This one in the lower right, this is from just a, a week and a half ago. Well, it's gone now, so whatever. But you can see that you know, the progression over time is one of the really great things uh, about the webcomics. The last thing, uh, storytelling and writing. Um, you can do things. In, when you don't have to stick to just three, three panels. Dinosaur Comics, this is two out of five panels of uh, very wordy dinosaur comics, as every dinosaur comic strip is. Um, Ryan North, who, who writes dinosaur comics, there's nobody who writes like him. Nobody, and, and you should read it. Um, another example, though, is Kukaburi here. Uh, Kukaburi is written like a graphic novel. Every time he publishes a new strip, it's uh, a page. And what he's doing is this long fantasy story. It's actually not comedy, really. Uh, there's, I mean, it's got funny moments, but it's a fantasy story. We don't really know what's going on yet, but be t I mean, also, by the way, gorgeous. Uh, the storytelling, though, is what drives Cougarbury, what makes it interesting. Uh, it's this fantastic world. Akewood. Uh, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. Akewood is... Uh, well, to give you some idea, in 2007, Time called Akewood the, the best graphic novel of the year. It's a webcomic. It's not a graphic novel. It's, uh, it's strips. It's just, you know, it's a comic strip. Um, but it is that good. Over time, Akewood has evolved. It started out uh, as a gag -a day strip, and then the characters started to develop. The author, Chris Onstad, started to do these long storylines. 
I don't know, this is my favorite one ever. <laughs> so last thing, um, Akewood, the best introduction I can give you is the great outdoor fight. Ray, shown there in the center of the screen, uh, kind of the main character of Akewood. He goes to this fight, three days, three acres, 3,000 men. Check it out, it's worth it. Read web comics. I'm done. <laughs>